So welcome to Techno Dad Life and my name is Jeff and so today what we'll teach you is how to make a zero dollar to you server out of an old PC. So the first thing you'll need is a PC and so I had this mini PC that I bought and I never did anything with it. You'll need a USB drive and a keyboard and you're going to need a monitor but you can reuse your monitor at home and you'll just need that for a few minutes so we'll need either a Mac or a PC so to get started you'll need to download Bella Anna Etcher and it's at etcher.bellana.io and then install that and then next we need to go to Open Media Vault click download and then download the stable version of Open Media Vault. Once you've done those two things, you need to install Bella Anna Etcher or Bellana Etcher. Get out your USB drive, stick that into your PC or your Mac, and we're going to burn that Open Media Vault image to the USB drive so then we can install it on our soon to be server. So next we want to go to Flash from File in Bella, Bellana Etcher. Pick out your OMV download, click Flash from File, click Open Media Vaults, open, select your USB drive that you installed, click Select, and then click Flash. And on a Mac, you have to give permission in order to do that, click OK. And then that looks it'll take about three minutes to write that file. So once that's done, you can eject and then close Etcher. And of course, pull out your USB drive because we need that. So next, put your USB drive into your future server and plug everything in. And you will need an ethernet connection on this. Uh, it will work out best. And then once everything's turned on, you'll need to know how to get into your BIOS. And basically what you can do is search your name brand and then BIOS key. And so for me, it's hit the escape key. Others, it's either F1, F2, F7, F10 are the most common ones. Uh, also the delete key. But let's do that now. So we're going to bring over our keyboard. So we're going to turn on our computer now. Smash, for me, the escape key. Okay, that took us to the BIOS. We're going to tab over to boot. And we're going to hit the first boot key and then hit or go over the first boot option, number one, hit enter. And then for me, my SanDisk USB drive, hit enter, go over, hit save changes, and exit, and yes. Now we're in the Open Media Vault install, I'll just hit enter. So next you'll be asked to pick out your language, country, region, and actually we'll do that a few times. So just hit whatever it is you need, and then hit enter. Now for host name, pick a host name that's meaningful for you. I just usually call my host the name of the computer because then it's easy to pick out. And then hit enter. And land name, uh, unless you have something specific, just leave this as is, hit enter. Now put in your root password and you'll have to do this twice and make sure you write this down because you will need this in the future. Okay, so next is partitioning, and so here we have the USB drive, which is the 15.6 SanDisk. And then we have a SSD, uh, M.2 SSD, and that is 512 gigs. And then we have a other one terabyte drive. So uh, just pick the drive that you want to install it on. If you just have one drive, that's fine. You just can't install it to the USB disk that you have on there already. 
But if you had inserted before this a second USB drive, you could actually install it to that USB drive also. But now it's a little too late. If you want to do that, you have to go back and start from the beginning. You can't add this from this point on until after the system is completely installed. Okay, so we're going to uh, install it on the 512. So I hit enter. And then tab over to yes to write the changes to disk. And now it's time for a cup of coffee. Okay, so installation is complete. Uh, if any other screens came up in between now and this point time, uh, just keep the default settings and hit enter. So now we have to take out the USB drive. There we go. And then hit continue. So now your new server will reboot and it will come up to a black screen, which is a login screen, but Basically, we don't need it after that, but I'll show you here what it looks like. Okay, so here you can see at the top that the server has your, your brand new server has rebooted and now we're at the command prompt. Uh, and so it used to be that it would give you the IP address of your server. It doesn't seem to do that anymore. So what we'll do is we have something different we can do. So what we want to do is download the Fing app and they have that for Google and Apple. So once you've downloaded it on your phone, hit scan and then it will come up. And since you know the name of your server, so mine is Blackview, it's on 6.7. So here you can see I went to 192.168.1.67 and then hit enter and then the login page showed up. And you log in the first time as admin and open media vault. So the first thing that we need to do is set up our dashboard. So we click on the little man up here in the corner, top right. And go down to dashboard and get rid of the welcome page there. Go to CPU. And you can change these later if you want to. And so we're just going to click a bunch here, go bottom right, click save. And there our server information comes up. I'm going to get rid of this. So let's go back over here, dashboard. Let's see how that goes. Oops, save. And that looks pretty good. Let's see. And you can't move these around, but that's a good start. Okay, so next we're just going to go down this list here. So we're going to click on Workbench first. We want to change our logout time to one day. Otherwise, it's going to log out every five minutes, which we don't want. And then we click Save and Apply. And yes, we're going to check our time. So it's using the NTP server, so we're okay there. So notifications, if we want to enable notifications, we do that here, putting an outgoing SMTP server, sender email, and there we, the address we want it sent to, then click save. And then events, you can have it sent for any one of these events. Power management, uh, we want to change the power button so it shuts off the computer when we press it. So we'll click save. Then apply and yes. Scheduled tasks for power management, we would add it right here and we can do reboot, shut down or standby from the screen and on a day, hour, month, whatever we want. Monitoring, it's enabled automatically. Scheduled tasks, if you want to run scripts, same idea, you would pick some time and then you would put the command here and then click save. Certificates, we can do SSH, SSL. Update management, so our updates, we're going to do those. And this will take a few minutes the first time. Once that's done, click close. And then apply, which is the check mark. And then yes. 
Okay, and so we go back to our systems menu. Check update one more time. No updates. Uh, settings gives us settings if we want to do pre-releases, community, maintain updates. I definitely recommend not doing that, especially for a beginner. Plugins, we're going to add in a few plugins right now and one a little later. So the first one is share root FS. And so what this does, so what this does is your disk that you installed in. So normally Open Media Vault saves the whole disk for itself, but it only actually uses eight gigabytes. So this use, lets you use the rest of that. So on mine, I installed so 512 SSD. So the extra 500 megabytes uh, I can use now if I install this. So you install it by pressing this down arrow and then confirm and yes. Then click close. And then back to system, plugins. And so you can search. And so up here in the top right, uh, this area is the search bar. We're going to search for Weddy. And so this is the program that is a terminal program, but it's in the browser. Uh, and if you notice, this is only for AMD 64, so it's not for Raspberry Pis. So for Raspberry Pis, you have to use some other application. So we're going to click on this, click confirm, and yes. So once that's done, click close. And so now we're going to go to services. So when this happens, you need to clear the browser cache. And so on Chrome, uh, you go to settings, uh, privacy and security, and then clear browser cache. And we just need to get rid of the cookies and the cache images, clear those. And then we need to re-log in. So if you keep on getting the screen, so basically go back to your IP address and log in again. So once we're logged in, we're going to go to services and we're going to click on Weddy. And so we're going to enable that and click save and then apply and yes. And so now if we go over to open UI, this is going to open in a terminal. We're going to type in roots and our password. And so now we're logged into our server. So if you're on a Raspberry Pi or you don't want to do it this way, uh, there is an alternative. Uh, you can download a program called PuTTY, which is an SSH client for Windows, that you install on your Windows machine that then lets you log into your server. Whereas Weddy, actually, this is actually on your server and you're logging in through that. Sort of confusing. Next, we're going to go to omv-extras.org. And so right here on the front page, we're going to copy this line that starts with wget, paste that into our terminal, and then hit enter. So OMV Extras makes it so the ability that we can use Docker, and also it has a few other features, which I'll show you in a second. Once that's done, go back to your server. We're going to go system and plugins. We're going to click on the compose plugin and install that. Click confirm and yes. So this is installing the base of Docker compose. Once that's done, click close, then go back to system and then go to OMB extras. And we want to click Docker repo and then save. And so that will install a few extra scripts that will make it easier to use Docker Compose, the Open Media Vault way. So that's installed. And how we can tell is we can close system and go down to services. And now you can see Docker Compose is there. So the next thing we're going to check is network. And so we have general. This 
is the name of our host and our LAN. If you want to change those, that's where you do it. Interfaces, if we want to make changes, we could do that here or create new ones. Proxies, if you want to put those in and firewall and you can create firewall rules. Next is storage. And so we want to click on disk. And so we have our root disk, which we can't really do anything to. We can just add power management and enable write cache. Our terabyte disk, we're going to erase that. And we're going to do a quick erase. If the quick erase doesn't work, then that means you have to do a full erase. Next is smart. So smart settings, we can enable those. And that can monitor our drives. There it displays our devices. We can click on a device and we can set the monitoring to be enabled and then click save. And if we click on the little triangle, that will show us the information about the disk, its attributes, logs, and extended information. If we go to schedule tasks, we can select a device and then schedule a test. Next is software RAID. And so we only have two disks, so we could do that in a mirror and then select those disks and then mirror them. If you have more than one disk, you can do RAID 10, RAID 5, RAID 6, and linear. We're not gonna do any of those right now. So next is file system. And so we want to do an extension for, and we're gonna add our other hard drive here. So our one terabyte one, click save. And time for another cup of coffee. So once that's done, click close. And then it immediately takes you into the mount menu here. So again, slick, select that same disk and then click save. And now you can see both our drives are mounted and only our first drive, which is number two here, is actually referenced, but that will change in a second. So we're gonna click shared folders. And so we're gonna create a couple of shared folders. The first one's gonna be called data. And we're gonna put that on our smaller drive and we're gonna make this read write accessible for everyone. And I do this because on my network is just me and this, this server is not exposed to the internet. Click save. We're going to create a second folder. This one's called compose. And again, on number two, the smaller disk and read writes and then save. And then our third one is gonna be called media. And we're gonna put that on the bigger disk and again, read writes and then click save. We're going to go to services. And so we already explored Weddy SSH is basically where we can change the port for our SSH or, on, or turn it on and off and a couple other things. But what we're gonna do first is create SMB shares so then we can access folders on our network. So we're gonna enable that. And if you want, you can enable home directories for your different users. Uh, advanced settings, so it's on SMB2, which should be the least you do. I wouldn't suggest SMB1 because it has too many security flaws. Uh, SMB3 is better. We'll just leave it on two for right now. Click save, then click shares. And so we're gonna add a public share. And so we're gonna be our media folder, public guests allowed. And that's about it. And we're gonna click save. So let's see if that share is available on our network. So if we go to our network, uh, there's our Blackview server. There's our media folder, we can open that up and we can create a new folder and delete it. So we've created a successful share on our network. So let's go back, see what other things we can find.
And so next we have RSync. And so this is how we would back up our computer to other computers. And we would just put in all that information, click Save there. And under Server, we can change the settings and the modules that we use. NFS is if you want to set up NFS shares and sharing it. Now to the juicy ones, so Docker Compose. So first we want to put on settings. And so for our share folder, we want to go to change it from none to compose. And so here we can see the directory permissions. So we're going to change that for everyone read write just for us. Our data folder is going to be our data folder. We're not going to have a backup folder. And then if we go down to the bottom, you see we can cancel, reinstall, restart Docker, and we're going to hit save. And so why I make it so everybody can read write my compose file is that then I can access it on my network and change things, which is easier for me. Uh, if you're exposed to the internet or you have other people on your network, uh, don't do that. And then how to add a container, you can go to Files, and then click the plus, and add from example in this instance. And so from this screen, it looks like there's nothing there, but if you click on it, you can see different Dockers you can install. We're going to click on Portainer, and we'll just call it Portainer. Then click Save. Okay, so now we have Portainer, so we can look at a few things on this line. So if we want to edit the file, this is where we would do it. If we want to add environmental variables, it's down here. If we want to delete it, if we want to check the compose file, make sure it's okay. Up starts the file. And so it's now it's started. We can stop it here. We can bring it down. We can pull the image. This is the docker ps command, so we can see the name, the image, the command, the service, when it was created, status, and the ports it's using. Our global environmental variables, if we have any, prune the image, and the docs. And so that would be OMB extras or docker on OMB. So now we have Portainer up. If we go to Services, we can see there is Portainer, and so these are the different ports it uses. And I know 9000 is brings up its web page, so we click on 9000. That logs us into Portainer, and here we would just put in a password, create user, click on Get Started, click on Local. And then we are on our local portainer. If we use this, you can see our stack, our containers, and our images. Uh, but you don't have to use portainer if you don't want to, uh, because you also have here over on the side now, we have besides our services, our stats, our images, our networks, volumes, containers, Docker files, which we don't have any, schedule, and restore, if we want to do that. So basically, this new Compose service uh, takes care of all those things. Users, we can add home directories, and we can add users here, and it has to have their name and their password, and then you can select groups what to add them to. And then click Save in the bottom right corner. We can create groups the same way. Name a group and then select members for it. And then finally we have Diagnostics. So system information, system logs. You have to pick what you want. Here's our boot log. Processes, services such as SMB, SSH, reports, and then 
performance statistics. There's our CPU, disk, load average, memory use, interfaces, and uptime. So we covered quite a bit of information. Make sure you go back and look at the video if something's wrong. Uh, if something doesn't work out, go to the Open Media Vault forums, and that is, and I'll leave the link in the description below for the Open Media Vault forums. In the future, I'll start doing more videos where we start adding in other Dockers again uh, with a new system of how we use Dockers here. I'm going to be on vacation though for a little while, so it will have to wait till I get back. In the meantime, you have a great day and take care and bye bye.